Come with on, the twenty second pick in the twenty twenty four. 28. 28. Yes, there. that's right. Come on, G. Ryan Dunn. Yeah! yeah! We got him. They got the guy we yeah! wanted. Hank McCoy. Hank McCoy. Hank McCoy. I'm a little torn here. I like both picks. If they were to get Collect or Dunn, I, I prefer Dunn. I think what Dunn brings is harder to get. Um, I... I Collect size worries me a little bit, but I still I still think he's the best passer in the country. Mm. He's the best pure point guard in the country as far as uh, his ability to pass the basketball. He can shoot the basketball, so I'm happy with either of these picks um, if they if they keep it and make this selection. But I, I can't believe if if we walk out of here with Dunn at 28 and three second round picks, I mm-hmm. mean uh, I don't think you have a better night. I don't, huh. I don't know if he can go better than that, guys. I think, <laughs> oh, shit, G. You the scared pick me. Is the is pick in. in. All right. Come with on, the man. 22nd pick in the 2024. 28. 28. 28. Yes, there. that's right. Come on, G. Ryan Dunn. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> we got him. They got the guy we yeah! wanted. Hell yes. Let's go, G. Give me some love, <laughs> That dog. is exactly what we had said earlier in the week that we thought that they wanted. They get the athletic wing that can play defense. That can also cut and is athletic. Look, I, I'm going to read. I'm going to read an oh, a expert analysis scouting report to you. Uh, an athlete who runs the floor and finishes with spectacular flair. He's a great transition player that has tremendous potential on the defensive end and can run with speed and stamina. Although he's an accomplished scorer, he's not a great shooter. He struggles with the range and consistency and has some difficulty hitting the pull-up jumper. Okay, who mm-hmm. is that? That's a lot of guys. That, that sounds like that sounds careers. like Ryan Dunn, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That sounds exactly like do you, Ryan. Do you Dunn. you want to know who that was? Who was it? 1999. It was Sean Marion. <laughs> that oh, was yeah. said about it. Sean Marion. And I'm not saying this guy's gonna be Sean Marion, but the hope that you look at, you look at his three point shooting, and you say, okay, Dunn struggled, couldn't couldn't do it. What shot 30 uh, percent overall in his two years. Uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 22% over two years. Excuse yep. me. Uh, you look at Sean Marin, uh, uh, 29 at UNLV. Yeah. Shot 18.2% his rookie year in the NBA. Yeah. I get that he may not be able to shoot now. That doesn't mean he can't develop it. And I still think that what he can do in this offense it, with his cutting ability is great. I think they got immense value yeah. at this pick. What what were his strengths that you liked I'm fucking, in this draft? I'm giddy, man. <laughs> I'm Josh. telling you, man, listen, again, six, seven and a half, seven, one wingspan, 214, a guy that can play on ball defense, off ball defense, will we'll try to we'll block shots, will help you on the offensive glass, the defensive glass. He's a great backdoor cutter. Um, he he will put pressure on the rim. He will attack the basket. He's got a good IQ. His the, the floor with this kid is very simple. He's not a great three point shooter, and he shot fifty three percent from the free throw line. I know that scares people, but I'm telling you, you could not find a better fit for this kid. If I was this kid's agent, I am so damn happy because I'm like you're getting to go play. With Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal, and Grayson Allen, and Royce O'Neal, and and Damian Lee if he opts in, and God knows who else comes, and those guys will shoot the threes, and your ass will bring everything that this team is missing defensively, athletically, getting younger. G, G, I'm I'm fucking giddy, G. Not Josh, Paul. Look, look, you look at this, and you go, you you checked off one of your big boxes for the offseason. Athletic wing that can play great defense. You you got probably the best defender in this draft at twenty eight after you traded down, mm. right? Look That's at this. the crazy thing to me because I think I think guys would have been happy with him at twenty two. Yes, I, I think I, I think people would have been some people would have been thrilled. You get him at twenty eight, you pick up three second round picks. Mm. I think you accomplished everything that you could have hoped to on night one of the NBA draft. Uh, look, this kid could look at have emotion. It's cool, and, and he could have multiple all defensive selections in his future, just because 
like we've said, he's a pterodactyl in terms of that seven foot one wingspan, yeah. the way he makes plays defensively from all over the court. He can blow up a def- an offensive play from anywhere on the court in yeah. terms of at the pick and roll, at the rim, uh, you know, being a free safety and picking off passing lanes. He is incredible on the defensive side of the floor. There will be offensive concerns, the shooting concern, the lack of a handle or, or really much offense in general outside of right at the rim. Uh, but if you put the right amount of shooting around him, if you teach him how to be an elite screener, roller, uh, finisher in transition, all of those things, he did shoot a really high percentage at the basket. So uh, this is a really good pick in terms of addressing their need for defensive length, athleticism, all of that good stuff. I, I mean, yeah, I'm guys. I am ecstatic. I am ecstatic. W- listen, when you when you have when when you I'm sorry, Espo, I didn't want to cut you off. Good, but when you're evaluating players mm-hmm. and you're in the NBA draft, and especially when you're the Phoenix Suns with a late first round pick, mm-hmm. the the dream scenario is to come off come out the draft with a player. That you can say, yo, this guy could be the best at something. Like, Cam Johnson, when we made that pick, people said it was a reach. I remember saying, I think it was a reach, but this guy might be the best shooter in the draft. Right? Man, we might have the best defensive player in this whole draft. Mm. And you got him at 28. And you also added three second-round picks to the mix. Man, what was it? What did you say? G? You you made an interesting comment. You hmm. said that you read a, a, an evaluation that said this guy scout said he could he had one yeah. Of the highest I've, I saw grades. from multiple draft experts when I was doing my research on these different guys because you look at different mocks and see where they have them going and how they evaluate different prospects. And multiple ones said this is if not the best defensive prospect I've ever evaluated. Ever. One of the best. So. I mean, this is an elite defensive playmaker, and the Suns needed that. They needed someone. I know he's a rookie, so he's not going to come in, maybe starting lineup and you know alleviate that burden from Kevin Durant. But if you need a stop, you no longer have to turn to Kevin Durant and say, we need you to stop this yes. guy. Or, or an older Royce O'Neal and say, we need you to stop this guy. You have a guy who's going to come in, inject athleticism, inject length, um, and a high motor, high defensive instincts and skill set into your lineup wherever he winds do, up playing. Do you think he gets on the floor with the with the offensive limitations? Do you, do you think there is a defined role with this bench unit that that this guy can play or minutes with the with some of the starters that he can play? Is is it is it possible? Because yeah, we obviously know that teams are not going to focus on him at all on the offensive side. Right. The, the hard part is obviously that he, not that him and Josh Kogi are the same, but similar to a Kogi because of the lack of shooting at this point, he would be optimized if you had him with the starters. Um, just because if you look at the shooting of Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, that's obviously easier to space the floor. So you are going to have to, I, I envision him being a bench player in year one, obviously. Um, you're going to have to surround that bench with enough shooting. Hopefully you find someone that can maybe move Grayson Allen to the bench so you have a shooter in that respect who can help yeah. space the floor around him. Uh, a big who maybe can space the floor because yeah. Ryan Dunn at this point, if you have him next to a rim rolling center who doesn't really have gravity yeah, then that makes things complicated so like i said this is a very fit dependent pick but i think the suns have enough shoot like they were a good shooting team last year they just need to shoot more more of them, of them. and if you're playing in mike budenholzer's holder system i imagine that they'll be able to do that yeah like i, I think that's going to be the focus is get up more threes and in that environment i think dunn has a better chance you got mm-hmm. You got law and order. Dun dun. Uh, I'm good. I, I love it, man. And and here's the thing, too, guys. Um, I, I agree, G. He's going to be a bench guy. I think he'll. I think his defense will allow him to have a chance to be a rotation guy. Mm. Um, when it all shakes out. But y- you're talking about a guy that my phone calls, my conversations, my evaluations. People were raving about how he was working out and Espo, the shot concern in the workouts weren't as extreme as I've heard. Like I heard that he shot the ball really well, G, Mm -hmm. in some of these workouts. And so you, you see that mechanically there's, it can be, you know, he can make the shot. It can get better. 
Um, man, Espo, <laughs> man, he's pumped. <laughs> I am pumped, man, okay. because you know, you know, we talk. We've been talking about this for Let's, now a couple weeks, right? Uh, we'll pull back the curtain. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm going along talk with what me. you said. Monday night, or a couple nights ago. Yeah, I was still leaning Kalak, and you said. No, listen to me. <laughs> let me let me tell you why. Mm-hmm. If Dunn is on the board, Dunn's your guy. We were talking, yeah, probably twenty two at this point. Yeah. Uh, you know, or potentially trading back. And you mapped it out in terms of showing some of those defensive plays at Virginia, uh, showing the comps that people were talking about Herb Jones, Herb Jones, Herb yes. Jones, and his struggles shooting early and in college, and then what he was able to do. What if the what have people been saying that the Suns need? They need a Herb Jones. Herb Jones. Mm-hmm. They need a, they need a Jaden McDaniel. They need they need that guy that can be disruptive defensively and do enough offensively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he can get there doing enough offensively, and we sure as hell know, based on what we've seen, that he can do it defensively. In the last twenty five years at Virginia, yeah, uh, only uh, only one player, Ryan Dunn, mm-hmm. has had. Fifty block or fifty blocks and forty steals in a season. This and kid v- can do it defensively. And we Virginia know that for is a sure. defensive machine. They've always had been.